in the wake of the midterms that have yet to be finalized because, you know, it totally takes a week to count ballots at the pace that it would take a damn toddler to learn how to fucking walk. We're now in the phase of finger pointing and cause of you bollocks. And during times like this, it's helpful to get the analysis of a foreigner. I've had several Americans ask, why is it that foreigners understand our country better than the people who live here? I'm guessing, but the impression that I get from Americans is that their country is very combative in its ever-deepening tribalism, and if you're outside the country, ego away from the attack zone, it's easier to give a more sober analysis of the situation. So I want to read this article from Rahim Kassam, who I think he used to work for Breitbart UK. He's pretty based, actually. So here is one of his latest Substack articles. Blame Trump for the red trickle. Nonsense. The GOP establishment is already trying to ding the Donald for its own underwhelming strategies and messaging. Do not buy it. Hmm, intriguing, do it go on. A flurry of phone calls and texts at 2 a.m. taught me that some long-standing MAGA stalwarts are now preparing to ditch Donald Trump because they didn't get the flood of feel-good results last night. This attitude is incorrect and sober analysis proves it. The Oh My God Red Wave Brigade are now the most vociferously disappointed. They set expectations so high, all the while carrying water for a Republican National Committee and party leadership led by the deeply unpopular Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, and Ronna Romney McDaniel. Now they're upset. Up and down the country, McLeadership candidates and strategies came up short of expectations. Not even all that short, to be fair, but still deflating enough that people are already playing the blame game. Two can play. Firstly, DC-based Republicans think it is enough to run against something rather than for something. They also fundamentally underestimated the appeal of Democrat messaging on abortion, student loan forgiveness, and the cringe-inducing our democracy. Honestly, we all did. People really are getting dumber and more pliant, and there's no ignoring that anymore, especially when you see how the TikTok generation turned out and broke for the far left. Congratulations, by the way, to Communist China for their apparently totally illegal and unchallenged election interference, while CNN staffers shriek about how Elon is trying to charge $8 for the very same verification process they've been outwardly demanding for a decade. Ugh. There's no need either to sugarcoat Trump's bad endorsements, as if the GOP field offering a choice between Dr. Oz and Dina Powell's husband was Trump's fault. Katie Barnett may have been better, but her star rose too late. Expecting the man the RNC consistently demanded to stay out of it, to simultaneously tread lightly and deploy massive resources to deliver the same McLeadership who worked against him in office is asinine. And imagine what some of those results would have looked like without Trump's rallies and assistance. Please. In much of Trump-backed world, things went pretty much as expected. Unless you live in that hashtag winning or oh my god red wave bubble. Expectation management has never been the forte of the political right. Especially those who make their living from keeping you engaged day in and day out. But then again, that is their job. Caviar emptor. Look at it objectively. Vance won. Nevada looks good. Maricopa County attempted another. <clears throat> Yet at the time of writing, Carrie Lake is within 10,000 votes of Katie Hobbs in Arizona. Georgia is predictably going to a runoff. Chris Kobach won in Kansas. Joe Kent will win in Washington. Anna Paulina Luna got in. And a host of New York and New Jersey seats flipped red. Heck, even Zeldin came closer than everyone except the quixotic optimists had hoped. No, there wasn't a red wave, but it's not fair to say there was only a red trickle either. Do I wish some of these campaigns and candidates had called upon some more thoughtful political strategists <clears throat> in the past few months? Sure, am I going to cry about it? Not really. Mitch McConnell can go to hell, especially since that's where he's been trying to send MAGA Republicans for the past six years. Now the prescription. Democrats run better campaigns mostly because they're allowed to, which in turn is because they dominate in positions that exert pressure in politics, media, and culture. It's easier for Democrats to rip down Republican yard signs without recompense. It's also easier for left-wing activists to get away with violence or intimidation. Their talking heads are rarely challenged when they lie. They use Chinese communist-owned platforms like TikTok to radicalize impressionable young voters and they use issues like abortion and student loans to do it. We recognize all of this as immoral, but elections aren't conducted by Marquess of Queensbury rules. Republicans play touch football and call it smash mouth. Democrats play smash mouth and call it kiss chase. The GOP leadership must change. If you accept that Republicans should have done better in the cycle, you have to go to the source of where the decisions are made and how the money is spent. 
That's in the hands of people like Kevin McCarthy, Tom Emmer, Mitch McConnell and Romna Romney McDaniel. Trump isn't a party leader in a European political sense. He wasn't on the ballot this year. He doesn't control the purse strings, nor the hires inside the GOP. His philosophy is ultimately beholden to centralized implementation. Wow, <laughs> that almost sounds like a king. DeSantis has a big and bright future, but it cannot come at the cost to the MAGA movement. Even those surrounding and supportive of the victorious Florida governor accept that DeSantis is closer to the GOP comfort zone, including the neoconservatives, than Trump is. The Florida governor had the winds at his back in this election, an horrific opponent, a mass Republican migration to the Sunshine State, and of course his own well-earned incumbent record to run on. I think I may have been the first person to tell DeSantis during a 2015 Sirius XM news interview that he would be president one day. But I do not think that time is now, and I do not fancy the governor wants to be the kingmaker of the party just yet. We shouldn't force that fight. Republicans have much to learn from these midterms. Be glad these lessons can be learned right now rather than in two years. <laughs> that is assuming the Republicans learn from it frickin' now. Certainly the strategy needs to change, certainly the messaging needs to improve. Importantly, we're seeing just how hard holding together a coalition on the right is. Republicans have a broader tent and a bigger problem than the centrifugal left, and it shows. How, for instance, did so many people hold their nose and vote for John Fetterman? Uh, probably because printing ballots smells kinda iffy. Tribalism, which despite the claims of the corporate left, is a philosophy far more readily accepted by Democrats than Republicans or the libertarian spoiler candidates for that matter. And Democrats know how to target them for that. TikTok videos about abortion? Those things work now. And no amount of pounding our fists and screaming about Hunter Biden is going to change that. If you really want a red wave, you have to drop the megaton bomb in the ocean. And if you think McCarthy, McConnell and McDaniel did anything close to that with the apparatus you fund, then I've got a bridge and much more to sell you. I do want to do a video related to this one, but I don't want to make this one too long. So that'll be all for today. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.